Atiku Abubaka holds press conference over Tinubu's certificate controversy and brain drain eating our universities. I am Bella Oba and this is Plus Politics. Not, not really. Um, yes, immediately after the elections, you know, I was told there was a delegation of governors uh, who claimed, you know, they were sent, you know, uh, by uh, the president. But I did not even allow them to get into my house. I didn't. We will only drop the fight uh, when the court rules. If the court rules that I am right, fine. If the court rules that he is right, so that's that's the end of the fight. Because at the moment we are at the Supreme Court, and there is no any other court than the Supreme Court. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party (PDP) in the 2023 election and said he would react after the Supreme Court's judgment. He maintained that he will drop his challenge to the victory of President Bola Tinumbu only when the Supreme Court rules. And so he was not ready to back down. Atiku had requested the release of President Tinumbu's certificate from the Chicago State University over the suspicion that the certificate the former Lagos State Governor submitted to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, may not be authentic. He also called on all well-meaning Nigerians, leaders of thoughts, religious, traditional, community, and political leaders in particular Governor Peter Obi of the Labour Party and Governor Rabi Ukwankwanso of the NMPP to join him in his campaign to enshrine probity, accountability and the basic principles of justice, morality and uprightness in our country and in our government. Joining me to discuss this is Barrister Monde Onyekachi Ubani, legal practitioner and chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association Section on Public Interest and Development Law, MBA Iphon Spider, and Evans Ufeli, constitutional lawyer. Gentlemen, Welcome to Plus Politics this evening. Thank you. Good evening. Let me start. Yeah, thank you for having me. Let me start with the jurisprudential father of the occasion, Barrister Ubani. Barrister, what does this, as as a lawyer who has uh, a special knowledge? and uh, who functions in a world that is a bit more akin than where most of us function in, what does all this amount to, especially uh, in respect of uh, what the Supreme Court may entertain or ultimately dis decide when this case uh, commences at the, at the Supreme Court? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I want to say this uh, with due respect. I hope I'm being heard. Yes. Am yeah. I being heard? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Loud enough, the sir. Yeah, the situation of things presently is that there is an appeal that is pending presently before the Supreme Court uh, by uh, former Vice President Article. Uh, and so, 
He has also sought fresh evidence uh, from the university allegedly attended by our current president. And he has uh, succeeded in getting the school to release some of the vital uh, uh, information he needs in order to pursue uh, the appeal to, to the Supreme Court. Now the issue is whether the Supreme Court will accept or uh, admit any fresh evidence after uh, the matter has been concluded by the court below. And I, I, I have said it somewhere else that really do appellate court accept fresh evidence. Uh, but they can on, only on exceptional grounds so for you to bring fresh evidence after the matter has been concluded. Because their job is to review the decision of the court below and not to begin to evaluate any evidence, uh, fresh evidence uh, that is going to be presented before the appeal court. The appeal court does not take fresh evidence ordinarily, but if there are special circumstances under which you are bringing it, which ordinarily also will be opposed by your opponent, the court will now exercise discretion, uh, which will be exercised both judicially and judiciously, and reasonably, in order to know whether that fresh evidence can be admitted. If those evidence were available, when you initiated a call at the court below and you didn't present it at that time, it would be very difficult to convince that appellate court to accept that evidence now. But if it came, maybe it wasn't available and it's very vital for the resolution of the matter now, the appellate court. Yes, it can, it can come in. So, where we are now is that we don't know what the Supreme Court will decide with the evidence that has just been uh, uh, received from the, from the university that was attended by the president. So, we await the reaction of the Supreme Court with regard to this, to this uh, pre fresh evidence, whether it will be accepted, uh, will be admissible in, 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 in the Supreme Court. Thank you very much, Barrister Obani. Let me go to Barrister Ufeli now. Uh, Barrister, all this tenacity, the enormous amount of resources that the uh, article camp must have invested in, in on earthing, literally on earthing, this uh, Evidence, are, are you lawyers trying to tell us, the non-learned ones, are you lawyers of the opinion that this may not quite fly for the primary purpose that one would ordinarily have thought it was, it was sought after, being useful at like the Supreme Court to invalidate the candidature of the president as, a, as at the time his document was filed with INEC. Well, first of all, the, the established point is that the essence of um, admissibility is irrelevance. That is the Evidence Act. And evidence is uh, admissible to the extent of its relevance to the fact of issue. Now, uh, this is a piece of evidence that uh, is coming late in the day. The general rule of law is that the Supreme Court or the Appellate Court will not admit fresh evidence. That is the general rule. However, there are exceptions to this rule. Section 22 of the Supreme Court Act, you know, empower the Supreme Court to, you know, um, in special circumstances to consider evidence on issues that were raised during the, the um, during the pendency of the case at the court of first instance. In this case, the uh, uh, court, the first court in question, that is uh, the tribunal. Now, this issue of foreign selective was raised, but there was no evidence to that effect. So in the true sense of it, well, some persons have called it fresh evidence. But I think that uh, it is an issue that was raised even at the court of first instance. Except that there was no evidence to ground that claim, and that is why it was thrown out. And now, um, the appellant has gone as far as procuring that evidence. And wants the Supreme Court to admit that evidence, the evidence on that reference. Now, the procedure of law is that he must seek the leave of the court and he must come by an application, a motion or notice or right effect, serving the adverse party and making that um, claim before the court that the court will need to admit the evidence because it is um, important in the case. Now, there are grounds upon which the Supreme Court will consider 
a fresh evidence or an evidence that was coming at a point when the case already on appeal one, if the evidence was not available at the time uh, that was most needed, that is at the call of first instance. And that two, the issue must have been raised at the call of first instance. And possibly the evidence could not be procured at that time. Now on appeal, now, now section 22 of the Supreme Court Act empowers the Supreme Court to even hear part of that case or the whole. Because the destination here is justice. That is why the law gives the, court, the Supreme Court this uh, elaborate discretion and even um, statutory rights to look into matters beyond what has happened in the, in, the, in, the, in the court of first instance. And in this case, what happened before now was that that evidence was not available. And now it is available. The same issue was raised at the court of first instance. Now the evidence is available. So I don't see any reason why the Supreme Court will not admit that evidence. However, however, the weight that the Supreme Court will place on the evidence is another issue. The probative value which you give to it because if you if the, the, the evidence, the piece of evidence in question had actually passed all the tests that is set down by the Evidence Act. The first which is relevant, is it relevant to the fact an issue? Yes. Okay. Two, so is the evidence available before the court now? How be it at the Supreme Court? Yes. Have the uh, appellant has even filed a motion to seek the leave of the court to that effect? That has not been done. That's another step they should do. Then, if they find that at this sub the adverse party, if they do that fine, then they proceed to hearing that and then move that motion before the court. Of course, the adverse party will object, but the nature of the evidence itself, okay, um, was not, um, was not, uh, the, 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 the Evidence Act also says, Section 133, that whoever wants the court to act on a piece of evidence must first of all before the court the existence of that of that document okay here the existence of it has been excavated excavated from the school that issued it and same have been uh, procured so the next thing is uh, the same to be tendered through a motion uh, to, to be filed uh, and adduced through a motion on notice as the advance party served and that motion will the determined first before the substantive appeal. Um, uh, Mr. Feli, let me go back now yes. to uh, Barista Obani. Barista Obani, uh, when I was listening to you as a, as a not learned person, I almost thought it was an ironclad closure that it would not be admissible. Listening again now to Barista Feli, uh, it's like, as is typical, when you listen to two lawyers or more, it's like, okay, there may be a window. Uh, that, that, that window may also, uh, may also be what uh, may have instructed uh, articles, tenacity, and the enormous amount of resources must have expended to, to uh, excavate this evidence. What would be your take to... Bastard Feli's uh, exposition and enlightenment that he had just given. I don't know, I don't know whether you listen to me. I said, ordinarily, ordinary, okay. the appellate court does not admit fresh evidence. That is what I said. But under special circumstances, they, they do. I said that you know in my opening statement. You did, you do. did. Yeah, you if did. you're able to prove that that particular evidence was not available at the time you initiated the process at the court below. If you do prove that, that it wasn't there, or if that evidence, piece of evidence was available to you and you omitted it, and you did not in any way from loaded, you did not in any way bring it up, you know, and tender before the court below, you cannot bring it up now as a, a, a documentary evidence you want to, you want to come and now uh, bring before this appellate court. So the law remains, and which is uh, which is corroborated is that you cannot bring a fresh evidence before the appellate court unless you are able to justify it. and that justification is a very exceptional ground under which they will 
So if they prove that at the time they initiated this process, those records that are released by the school was not available, but they started the initiation of going to the university in order to get this uh, particular record, which eventually was released other yesterday or today, then the court will look at it. But as I said earlier, it is still a discretion that the court has to exercise. It's a discretionary power. They have to exercise in admitting. And that particular discretionary power, the law says, must be exercised judicially, that in accordance with the law, judiciously, with equity fairness in mind, and reasonably too. So even though it's going to be admitted, it will be a discretion that the Supreme Court can Barrister Ubani, let me just because say this. As I said earlier, this matter is before the Supreme Court. And we will not want to delve into it. You know, what we do is to look at it peripherally, you know, at the level that it stays without going too much details. They will be the one to know what they will do. You know, but the law is that ordinarily you don't bring fresh, fresh evidence at the appellate court. You can only do that if it wasn't available at the time you initiated the process at the court below. And we have found out in this article that they are alleged forgery. They did a late forgery, but they were not able to prove it. So the facts has already been averted in their petition. So but what was missing now are these documentary videos that have just been released. So they can now bring it up before, because suppose our form records that would have been transmitted. It is not a fresh thing that is coming before the Supreme Court are fresh. It's, it's not part of the records that was transmitted from the court below. So that's why it's a fresh evidence. Documentary though. So the court now will look at it and find out whether there is a reason for it to be admitted under the exercise discretion. They may exercise in their favor or against the person that has brought that particular application. That can only come Barista Bani. before the court. No. Barista Bani, can an unlearned yeah. character like me just uh, simply put everything in this dictum? It's not over until it is over. Can I just, can one just simply Say, oh, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Put, put that dictum again. That dictum you said. Okay. Know. I said, can you, that is as unlearned as I am, I'm not a lawyer. You are learned. You are learned. <laughs> I'm educated. I'm educated, but not learned. <laughs> as you know, as you say. But I, I'm actually saying, uh, one can safely say at this juncture that it is not over until it is over. Correct. It is not as easy as people think. There are other considerations which we have said. The ordinary, they don't. But for you now to succeed in getting the Supreme Court now, appellate court now, to look at a fresh evidence, fresh documentary evidence, you must have actually pleaded it. And you are bringing it because it wasn't available at the time you initiated the court, you know, the, the process at the court below. And some other consideration that the court will take into full account before they can now exercise discretion. But that is question, as I said, that must be exercised judicially in accordance with the law, judiciously with fairness they put in mind, and of course reasonably. Uh, Barrister Feli, let's yes. now let's now take a panoramic look at uh, the documents that have been excavated. Using your word, I, I quite like your word, uh, excavated more than the one I earlier used uh, as in on health. Uh, looking panoramically at the at the documents, including the the diploma or the certificate, what's your take? If you have any uh, observations or opinions you you want to throw out there? Well, clearly the documents that um, was issued by the school, the president was alleged to have attended was actually different from the one that he submitted to ANEC. Okay? Because if you look at the one that the school produced, you find out that there, there's an issue with the gender, with the female. Okay? And then um, if you look at uh, the one that uh, he submitted to ANEC, which was alleged to be the, the one that he used for the NYC, that one, the A there, uh, you know, stated a different thing from the one that is in the school. So by the time you put all that together, from the face of it, it is quite clear that the two documents are not the same. Except that the school has said he attended that uh, university. But the fact that what he submitted to INEC is at variance with what uh, 
you now have from the school goes a long way to show that perhaps that document is not the genuine document. Mr. Feli, and when you look at Mr. Feli, yes. uh, valid as the observation, I may say the registrar of the school literally affirmed uh, under oath that the the person in question attended the school and that diploma, the paper document that we call certificate here, and they call diploma in America, that is quite superfluous to the to the validation of uh, was educational documentation in America that you could, you know what? Uh, what's important to them is their transcript, and that you know, knowing the the enormity of the penalty of of perjury in America, which is ten years, why would somebody as reputable as the registrar of such a school want to affirm in a law court that the gentleman passed through the school as a bona fide student. I'm just asking given the observations that Adelia uh, pointed out. Well, I, I sometimes sometimes uh, I, I think these politicians, they bring uh, this um, very difficult situation upon themselves. First of all, the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria clearly says that the minimum requirement to become a president of Nigeria is just your ability to read and write. It does not even say you must have any certificate. The Masari, the Masari, the Masari rule, the Masari rule of the Supreme Court. You know when when uh, Masari became the Speaker of the House of Representatives, some members of the House took him as far as the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that he needed he didn't even need a school cert. All he needed to do was to prove that he could read and write and show evidence that he had worked in a company or in an, in an organization for 10 years. People don't know that you don't even need, you don't even need SCOSA to become the president of Nigeria or governor. Uh, so if you, have, if you have a law that has a good statutory at the judicial precedent that have reduced the qualification to the barest minimum to almost nothing, why do you take a certificate that you, you cannot uh, defend uh, and, and submit him to ILEC. And then turn around to, to go and file an application um, asking that the school be restrained from releasing your academic uh, documents to the public because it will cause uh, a harm and incalculable damage to your person and third degree and all that. The, the president himself inflamed this situation. By, by refusing to, by concealing and refusing to allow for a free, um, a free uh, hand in the possession of that certificate. Now, the whole thing is out there. Um, the Supreme Court will decide on exactly what they are going to do in the case of my reference. But what I think is that at this level, the president of Nigeria ought not to be seen around the circumstances we have today because. The country is battling with a lot of issues, and um, to add this to it, that will now inflame and create some uh, international um, discordance. It's not one that we should be talking about. So the, the position should save us from some of these problems. Um, he, he could have just submitted uh, his, his primary school certificate or, or, or just proof to, to the INEC that he can read and write. He has been a governor before, so the, the evidence is not lost that he has capacity in terms of uh, uh, cognitive. He has cognitive capacity to be a president. So, but trying to prove that you have gone to everyone, you have been everything before now, is a problem that we have with our politicians. And I think that the Supreme Court should deal with this issue on the face value, on the interpretation of uh, the law as it is, so that this will stand as a deterrent to other politicians who they want to throw that line. I mean, uh, Feli, let, me, let me quickly go, go to Mr. Mr. Obani. Mr. Obani, uh, we are waiting for the sick. Some of us are already, you know, preparing, uh, waiting for the sick. Uh, but you know what, Mr. Obani, you are a senior member of the bar, whichever way we look at it. Uh, if you were to be the counsel to 
uh, to any of the two principal uh, principals of this uh, of the parties involved in this uh, cause. What would be your personal advice to each each one of them? Uh, legal service, pro, pro bono, pro bono, public legal service. No, first and foremost, they would have paid me so much money uh, for this uh, advice you want me to give now. Uh, article, article has gone so far uh, in getting this particular information, and, and this is the first time in our political and you know, jurisprudential uh, uh, experience for us to have such a matter of this magnitude at the electoral level issue of electoral matters, we have never gotten to the level where uh, any party would have gone to this extent of uh, going to a foreign university, you know. Oh my. But not even at the Senate level or House of Reps. So this is the first time uh, this is uh, uh, going to happen. Pastor Ban, you may have forgotten the fact too that uh, with uh, President Muhammadu Buhari, some people went as far as proving that, uh, mm. uh, went as far as saying that although he attended a postgraduate school, a military postgraduate school in America, but that the, the certificate or the qualifications precedent was not satisfactory to them, although it was not, it was not argued at the Supreme Court, but they had been president of a sort. Uh, of a similar yeah, that, what, what, I'm trying, what, yeah, what I'm trying to say is that we never had any proceeding of this nature in, in Britain with regards to the, to the qualification or papers of, of Buhari. Of course, if you can recall, uh, this is the second time we're having issue of certificate, quite all right, you know, but the level that Article has uh, taken this okay, is a different level entirely. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Now that he has gone so far, he has said he's not going to back up at this level because the matter presently is before the Supreme Court. So he wants to go the entire up. He will want a pronouncement by the Supreme Court in order for him to, uh, to, to relax. And whatever the Supreme Court says, that he is ready to abide by it. So I will not be in a position now to tell him probably to back down because he has gone to this level, spent so much money in order to gather this particular evidence. So let the Supreme Court satisfy his curiosity as to the validity or the usefulness of that piece of evidence that he wants to now bring before the Supreme Court in order to prove his point. Now, for the respondent, and that is uh, the legal team of uh, our president, they are going to do a lot. They need to study the, the strategy of the appellant. What strategy are they coming with? What manner of uh, strategy are they going to How are they going to persuade the Supreme Court? Now, how would you also persuade the Supreme Court in order not to accede to whatever request that the legal team of article will be presented. So I will advise them to master the strategy and know what to do. Looking at the state of the law, electoral law, the provisions of the constitution, you know, every law that is available that will come, including evidence, evidence act that will come to the rescue Bani, at this point. Bani, yes. Bani, I really do appreciate uh, your coming on this evening. Uh, I also want to say thank you to uh, by Stavofeli, time has not been kind to us. This thing, he, 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 as it is sweet, Nain, we just have to hand it. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. We go on a short break now, and when we're back, we'll be looking at brain drain eating our universities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.